Welcome. Let's do something a little more advanced this time. Let's look at the Fibonacci numbers and see if we can find a formula for them. This is not part of any standard curriculum, this is just for fun. First of all, here are the Fibonacci numbers 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and so on. So each number is the sum of the two numbers before. 5 is 3 plus 2, the 13 is 8 plus 5, 21 is 13 plus 8, so the next one would be 21 plus 13 is 34, and so on. These numbers were introduced by uh, Fibonacci, a fellow from uh, the 1200s, roughly, and uh, he was actually bringing in the Hindu-Arabic numerals to Europe, wrote a book about it, had a problem about rabbits, breeding rabbits, and the sequence of numbers appeared. Today, these are called the Fibonacci numbers, and they're usually denoted with the capital letter F, so we've got F0. Um, people tend to start with the, the very first one being F0, F1, F2, F3, F4, and so on. So I'm wondering, is there a general formula for the nth Fibonacci number. If I just say, I'd like to know what F587 is, please, could you tell me now? Is there a formula for it? The answer is yes. And let me do a technique um, that often occurs in uh, analyzing sequences of this type with a recurrence relation underlying them. The idea is actually very sneaky and very clever, and who would think to do this, other than just someone having thought about this for a very long time, is, okay, I have a sequence. I wonder if there's a, a, another type of sequence that has the same properties attached to it that I can analyze more easily. And one type of sequence people can understand, um, play with is a power series. Suppose I have a sequence 1, x, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, x to the fifth, and so on. Um, it's actually convenient I start with 0 because x to the 0 is 1, so it's, it's a nice little uh, convenience there. Can I find a value for x such that this series of powers of x behaves just the same way as the Fibonacci numbers? That is, I want each term, like x to the fourth, to be the sum of the previous two terms, x cubed plus x squared. Or x cubed would have to be the sum of its previous two terms, x squared plus x to the one-th. In fact, if I divide the first one by x squared and divide the second one by x, I see all these relations come down to the very beginning three terms. Can I find a number x such as x squared equals x plus 1? Well, the answer is yes. That's just a simple quadratic. And um, I'll leave it to you to, to verify this actually has two solutions. One I'll call phi, which is 1 plus the square root of 5 all over 2. And one I'll call tau, 1 minus the square root of 5 all over 2. That's just the quadratic formula. In fact, this number phi is very famous. It's called the golden ratio. All right, so yes, I now have two sequences, 1, phi, phi squared, phi cubed, phi to the fourth, and so on, and 1, tau, tau squared, tau cubed, tau to the fourth, which each behave exactly like the Fibonacci numbers. That is, phi to the four is indeed phi cubed plus phi squared, and phi to the hundred is indeed phi to the ninety-ninth plus phi to the ninety-eighth, similarly for tau. So these are very Fibonacci-esque. Um, they do have one advantage, they both start with the number 1, like the Fibonacci numbers do, but they don't go to this, this second number being 1 as well. The second number here is phi, the second number here is tau. So the thing to note, and I'll change pen color here, is that actually, if I take this sequence and this sequence and combine them in any way I like, by choosing some number A and do the phi to the n sequence, plus some number B and do, whoops, tau to the n sequence, this too satisfies the same Fibonacci relation. That is, if I looked at phi a to the phi n plus 2 plus b tau to the n plus 2, this would have to equal a to the phi n plus 1 plus b tau to the n plus 1 plus a phi to the n plus b tau to the n because these individual terms do, therefore a linear combination of them does as well. So my job now, actually, is to choose clever constants for a and b so that this sequence begins just like the Fibonacci numbers. Let me give myself some more space. Da -da 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 -da. I'll clear this here. I don't think this is going to be enough space, but let's see what happens. All right, here goes. I want a phi to the n plus b tau to the n to behave like the Fibonacci numbers, not only in their recurrence relation, but also at their very beginning. Let's look at n equals zero. Oops, where's my pen, sorry. n equals zero. I want a times phi to the 0, just a times 1, plus b times tau to the 0, which is just b, to equal the first Fibonacci number 1. So I want a plus b to equal 1. Now look at n equals 1. I want a times phi to the 1, plus b times tau to the 1, to be the second Fibonacci number, also 1. OK, this is two equations in two unknowns. It's not much work, I'll leave it to you on the side, because I'm worried about my time here, that then follows that a is actually phi 
uh, divided by the square root of 5. And b turns out to be negative tau divided by the square root of 5. So this tells me if I choose these particular numbers for a and b, the sequence over here not only behaves like the Fibonacci numbers in terms of their occurrence relation, that each term is the sum of the two previous terms, but also that beginnings will be the same. It starts off being 1 and 1. Well, there I have it. Uh, ooh, need more space. Heavens, heavens, heavens. This tells me that the sequence, here goes, I'm going to write it out, uh, yet another color. A times phi to the n, that'd be phi to the n plus 1 over root 5, plus b times tau to the n, that'd be minus tau to the n plus 1 over root 5, has the property, in fact, let me give it a name, let's call it gn, has the property that g0 is 1, that came from here, has the property that g1 is also 1, that came from here, and we've set it up so that gn plus 2 is gn plus 1 plus gn. So this sequence gn starts off just like the Fibonacci numbers and continues on as the Fibonacci numbers, therefore I must deduce it is the Fibonacci numbers. So I have it. Let me write out this, this beastly formula in full detail and make it look even more shocking. This tells me, ooh, let's get more space, this is a very messy board. Voila, I put it in here. Thank your pardon for taking so long. Here goes. This is a formula for the nth Fibonacci number. The nth Fibonacci number must be, everything's divided by root 5, I'll put that at the front. Phi to the n plus 1. Phi was 1 plus root 5 over 2 to the n plus 1 minus tau, that was 1 minus root 5 all over 2, and this must be the n plus 1. There it is. If I want the 587th Fibonacci number, put in 587, 587, work out these horrendous, horrendous looking, uh, these powers here, and amazingly all the square roots of 5 will cancel out with this root 5 on the denominator, and voila, it will be an integer answer, and the integer answer will indeed be F587. There is a formula for the nth Fibonacci number. Mind-boggling. Thanks very much.